Ladies and gentlemen, please put your hands together for the first annual Embrace Your Shift Bonanza Extravaganza. Do we have a show in store for you today? Brace yourself, because you will be in for a treat. Somebody who loves me. That's wonderful, Tiana. The shadow dancer was her mother, Angelique Sunshine. Yay, the two of you. Mother, daughter. I'm grateful that the universe uh, is giving us the ability to connect with this, no matter you know if it's virtual or not, and the ability to exchange this loving and hopeful energy. Wow. Tiana, you are such a joy. Thank you so much. I, I'm super excited. At, do you want to do another song for us a, a little bit later? Uh, we'll see. Maybe. Awesome. Awesome. Because uh, this is our first ever Bonanza Extravaganza. So I just love everybody. And and Doc, you were saying it so well. I, I appreciate how much you're just behind the scenes guy, just, just helping to bring all this energy of doing the Zoom together. Is that this isn't even a time of high performance as much as it's a time of just reflecting and, and our goodness. And so, so Benita, were you ready to uh, introduce the, uh, the next act for us? Thank you, Zach. Our next act is Soren. He's been a laughter yoga leader for the past eight years. But before starting laughter yoga, he was taking life way too seriously. So he decided to take laughter seriously. <laughs> Let's laugh for the hell of it. Take it away, Soren. Well, thank you. Thank you. <laughs> and uh, has everyone here done laughter yoga? Anyone here done laughter yoga before? I love it, brother. I'm a big fan. Some of you. Cool. And laughter yoga started back in 1995 by a medical doctor named Dr. Madan Kataria. And he was noticing at the hospital he was working at that people were drained of energy walking around like this. So he started this little laughter club in a park in Mumbai, India. And after he started this laughter club, there are now 125 countries involved and over 27,000 clubs. And what we do is we get into a group like this and through movement and eye contact, simulated or playful laughter becomes real laughter. But, <laughs> and this is one of the great secrets of the universe, it doesn't matter. The body cannot differentiate between simulated or playful laughter and real laughter. When you laugh from the belly, that deep belly laughter, it sends all these endorphins throughout your body. And when those are sent throughout your body, cortisol and other nasty stress hormones cannot coexist. And why laughter yoga? Well, what we do in laughter yoga is we incorporate the yogic breathing as well to it. So we'll do a bit of yogic breathing as well. And we also incorporate childlike playfulness. Like for instance, we go like this. Very good, very good, yay! Everyone, if you join me, very good, very good, yay! <laughs> Excellent. Now, does anybody here ever make mistakes? Oh, all the time. All the time, okay. <laughs> now there's a, my favorite quote is by Albert Einstein, a person who never made a mistake never tried anything new. So think about that. A person who had never made a mistake, never tried anything new. In laughter yoga, this is how we deal with mistakes. Oh no, I made a mistake. <laughs> Everyone ready? Oh no, I made a mistake. <laughs> and again, oh no. I made a mistake. <laughs> oh no, I made a mistake. <laughs> oh no, I made a mistake. <laughs> very good, very good. Yay! Very good, very good. Yay! Now, when you do laughter yoga, you might have this little voice in the head, your head over here saying, Oh, this is really silly. But Robert Holden, who wrote the, the book Laughter, The Best Medicine, he wrote that being silly is not silly. Being silly is the first step at being free. I'll repeat that.
Being silly is not silly. Being silly is the first step of being free. So let's just uh, allow our silliness to come out. <laughs> now, one of my favorite exercises that recently, uh, since COVID-19 has come about, is the laughter vaccination exercise. So what we do is we take out our little finger like this, if everyone joins me here, and take our finger and we're just ready for a laughter inoculation and we go like this. <laughs> and the other arm. <laughs> <laughs> and both at once. <laughs> ho ho ha ha ha. Ho ho ha ha ha. Ho ho ha ha ha. Very good. Very good. Yay! Very good. Very good. Yay! <laughs> now, is anybody here from California? I, oh, Eric is. Yes, Eric. Who else yes, is from California? Oh, and Angelique's from California and Tiana, cool. So yeah, there, just, a, just a moment while I get my friend from California here. He's just over here, okay? I'll be, <laughs> uh, I'll be right back. Yeah, yeah, I, hello there. I, I just came up from California. Yeah, don't worry about it. Yeah, my favorite exercise is pumping iron, but we do it laughter iron. Okay, here we go. <laughs> yes, pump it up. Here we go. <laughs> Come on, you can do it. <laughs> Come on. Come on, pump it up. Do bicep curl. <laughs> Come on. <laughs> yeah, the other arm must balance out to right and left side. Come on, you can do it. <laughs> Come on, you can do it. <laughs> yeah, this is my favorite one. When you have something dead on the ground, you need to pick it up and put it over your head. It's called the deadlift. Here we go, everybody. <laughs> pick up from the ground. Come on, you can do it. Ho ho ha ha ha. Ho ho ha ha ha. Ho ho ha ha ha. Very good, very good. Very good, very good. <laughs> Excellent, well done everyone. Let's take a breath. Breathing in. Long deep breath and out. Long deep breath in. And out. And one more deep breath in. Everybody hold, 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 and laugh it out. <laughs> now, one, another one of my favorite exercises actually started here in Victoria, and it's called the red light, green light laughter yoga exercise. And my friend Gene Furby, who was on his way to a laughter yoga session that he was leading, when he was making his way there, he was in a rush. And what happens when you're in a rush? You hit all the red lights, right? So here he was rushing as fast as he can and it's like red light after red light. And then he got frustrated. He was like, like this. But then he went, well, wait a second, I'm a laughter yoga leader. So the next red light, he made a decision to stop at that red light, look up and just go, <laughs> Like that, and he made it to the laughter yoga session in a much better mood than if he was frustrated. And this has been, this laughter yoga exercise has gone all around the world, and it's from the city that I'm in. So play along with me. We get into our cars, step into the car, we start up our, whatever it is, our Ferrari or Lamborghini. <laughs> and then, when I say green light, we move around the room as, mu as much as we can. And then when I say red light, we stop and we laugh. Okay, everyone ready? Green light. Red light. Green light. 
ร้อนลอยกรีนลอยร้อนลอยโอ้My favorite laughter yoga exercise, and this the last one we'll do, is called mental floss laughter. Now you all probably floss your teeth, right, with dental floss. Well, what we do in laughter yoga, I invite you to join along. We take a piece of mental floss, just like this, <laughs> and we put it through one ear and out the other, like this, and we just go like this, and we just go. <laughs> <laughs> and now that we have all this mental clutter in our hands here, right? All this mental clutter, all from 2020. This is our 2020 mental clutter. We're gonna all throw it around, uh, over our shoulders. Everyone ready? Here we go. Uh, uh, uh. <laughs> oh, there's a little more here. Oh, here we go. Oh, oh, oh. <laughs> Excellent. Well done. Now, let's just take a nice big deep breath in and let it all out. Breathing in. And out. And take one more deep breath in and interlock your thumbs. And then put both palms on the chest. And just close your eyes for a moment. And breathe in, contemplating the words ease, love, and compassion. When you live with ease, you live without dis-ease. So we'll breathe in the words ease, love, and compassion, and then sigh it out. Breathing in, ease, love, and compassion. Ah, excellent. Thank you very much for sharing this short laughter yoga session with me. And I'm very grateful for all of you for being here and to share this wonderful, amazing opportunity and the connection, the virtual connection we're having today. So thank you. Keep laughing. Keep on laughing in the free world. <laughs> Keep on laughing in the free world. Oh my gosh, how fun was that? Thank you so much, Soren, you're amazing. But Nita, do you wanna introduce Brennan? He's gonna be our next, and he's gonna be giving Yay. us a magic show. Yay! Now, Brennan is 12 years old, and a week from the day, he's going to be a teenager. So happy pre-birthday, Brennan. He got started in magic when he was 10 years old. He won a reward at the library, a magic show ticket. And that just uh, got him addicted <laughs> to magic, that is. And he has a wonderful talent. And thank you so much, Tannen. Are you ready to go? Take it away. Yes. Brennan Kaufman. Thank you. 
Gosh, Brennan, do you want to you want to tell us a little bit about yourself? You want to give us a little uh, little story? Yeah, sure. So, um, I I'm so happy that I I got this chance to be um to do some magic because um yeah, I just I just do magic at home, right? And I I can I I, I don't really get to show it to much much people, right? When it, in COVID and stuff, and then then I get this opportunity to do magic to a bunch of people. And it's so fun bringing, making people happy and stuff. So, yeah. You've made me so happy. You've blessed me so much, bro. That's why I even started this group, Embrace Your Shift, is I'm usually a preschool teacher living in the jungle, behind the scenes, not even have an internet connection. But as I realize just how important it is to, to maintain this connection, I want to know your secrets, bro. How did you make all... Oh, how did you do that, man? That blew my mind. <laughs> um. Well, that was amazing, and thank you so much. And uh, hey, Ruby, are you still here with us? No, I took her place. We still got Ruby there, Miss Bonita. I do. Oh, Where cool. Who's go? this? Yeah, yeah, Ruby's here. Because uh, Ruby was wanting me to to do this song for her, and uh, I was oh, thinking yeah, it might yeah. be a please, good little please, please. little transition, you know. And so I like to start off by just saying, I like to set the bar really, really low. Because for me as a preschool teacher, it's all about play as being learning that as we reinvent ourselves into this new world that we step into the reality of whatever superheroes we want to be. So I just felt inspired to, to play this song for you guys. You guys want to hear it? Yeah! I found some better words that so nobody's ever heard And I, I wish I had a better voice that, that sang some better words And I, I wasn't found some chords in a quarter that is new And I, I wish I had to rhyme every time I sang If I, if I was told when I was older All my fears would be strange And now I'm insecure and I, I care about what you think Cause my name's Blurry Face And I, I care what you think My name's Blurry Face And I, I care what you think Well, I wish we could turn back time To the good old days When our oh, mama sang us to sleep But now we're stressed out I wish we could turn back time to the good old days when our oh, mama sang us to sleep, but now we're stressed out. And if anybody knows the song, feel free to unmute yourself and sing along. Cause we're stressed out. We're stressed out. Well, sometimes a certain smell will Take me back to when I was young and, and come again. I'm never able to identify where it's coming from. I, I'd make a candle out of it if I, if I ever found it. I tried to sell it, never sell out of it. I, I probably only sell one and it be to my brother. Cause we've been through so much together. Some clothes hanging home grown in a stone's throw in a creek we used to roam. But it would remind us of when we were nothing really mattered. How the student loans in a tree houses, homes we all were 
take the ladder Cause my name's Blurry Banks And I, I care what you think My name's Blurry Banks And I, I care what you think Well, I wish we could turn back time To the good old days When I, my mind sing us to sleep well, now we're stressed out And I wish we could I wish we could turn back time To the good old days When I Mama sang us to sleep But now we're stressed out Where we used to play pretend Give each other different names We would build a rocket ship And then we'd fly it far away We, we used to dream of outer space And they're laughing at our face and uh, wake up, you need to make money. <laughs> we used to play pretend, give each other a different names and we would hold the rocket ship and then we fly it far away. And we used to play pretend, we used to dream of outer space, but now they're laughing at our face and wake up, you need to make money. <laughs> All right. Well, that was a lot of fun for me. I hope it was fun for you. I am so grateful to everyone that is tuning in live. And I'm so grateful for just this embracing your shift reality where we're all stepping into our shift to let it shine out into beauty. And I believe that, Doc, you have an amazing story to share with us. Benita, would you want to introduce Doc for us? Oh, yeah, yeah. Thank you, Zach. Thank you for playing your ukulele. I like it. Okay, our next talent is Doc Yoder. Now, if you look up above, you'll see we both have the same last name. However, we're not married, and I've never met him in person. We met through a magician's Facebook group and noticed each other had the same last name. But in talking today for the first time on Zoom, we discovered he grew up in the hometown where my father grew up, right outside in the country. And he knows my cousins. It really is a small world. That's Kelowna, Iowa. But now he is a dishonest magician, although Brennan had the magic spotlight tonight. And he's a storyteller. And from Lancaster, Pennsylvania, welcome Doc Yoder. Oh. It, it really is a small world. So I grew up on the corner and next door was Al's house, Al Meller, and then Leo, um, Leo Meller, Al Yoder, then Leo Meller. And then it was Orin Yoder, which was uh, Benita Joy's uncle. So uh, I knew her family from that way. And we are embracing the shift. It's a learning experience for all of us. Just letting the performers know that I'm monitoring it on Facebook as well. And uh, for some reason, I don't know why, whoever is speaking is spotlighted on Facebook. So when we're doing the double spotlight, it's not coming through to Facebook. So just be aware of that. If you're saying something during my story, for some reason, it jumps to you and puts you on live as long as you're talking. So, all right. So I'm going to tell you a story. I'm borrowing it from my dad with his permission. Uh, it's a story, you can find it in a book called Lena's Boys. So if you go on Google and you type Lena's Boys, Frank Yoder, you will find the book, Stories of His Life. And of course, since I'm telling it uh, verbally rather than reading it to you, there'll be some changes, minor things. Uh, hopefully the intent of the story comes, comes through. My dad was a kind person. Uh, a lot of people benefited from his kindness during his life. He will turn 80, uh, 89 years in January 6th. And uh, this is a story from him. I'm going to be telling it as though I'm my dad. Uh, so when I use I and me and we, that's not me, Doc Yoder, I'm talking about. It's actually, I'm speaking my dad's voice. It was 1939, the fall of 1939. It was a tough time for farmers in small town Iowa. It was just after the depression. It was especially hard for my grandmother, Lena, because my father died when I was just a little boy. I have only one memory of him. And my three older brothers and my mom were trying to hold on to the farm in a very, very tough time. In the middle of September, we were invited to the Bender farm after church for Sunday dinner. And we all looked forward to it because Mrs. Bender was a wonderful cook. 
And I knew that she was going to have at least two kinds of pies and probably chocolate cake for dessert. And in my little six-year-old self, I was determined to leave room at the end for dessert. But that food was so good. And I filled up my little six-year-old belly and it got time to dessert and I didn't have room for a mouthful. That was disappointment number one. Disappointment number two was the Benders didn't have any boys my age. All their boys ran off to play with them older brothers. I'm standing there looking lost and forlorn. And then Mrs. Bender saw me. She said, Frankie, because that was my name, Frank. Frankie, our collie dog just had puppies two weeks ago. She's out in the barn in the horse stable behind the feed box. Would you like to go see them? And of course, I said, yes. And so I went out to the barn and I went real quiet, I opened up the barn door, I went in and I peeked behind the box. And there were the puppies. Now, Mrs. Bender had told me that there were six puppies and I started counting them. One, two, three, four, five. There was only five puppies. She said there were six. And then I noticed, pushed off to the side, away in the hay that was there in the, uh, close to the box, was the smallest, tiniest puppy. It was the runt of the litter. It just had a little short stub tail about this long. And the bigger puppies, it pushed away. It wasn't getting milk. So I picked it up to put it back on its mother. And when I picked it up, it licked my finger. And I held it up to my face to breathe that warm puppy smell and to lick my nose. And then I knew, I knew beyond a shadow of doubt that puppy was going to be mine. I would name it Lassie. I would teach it tricks. I would teach it how to roll over. I would teach it how to stay. I would teach it how to fetch. I'd teach it how to help bring in the cows for milking. I would teach it to play dead. I would even teach it to count. So if somebody said, what is four minus two? I would hold my finger to my nose and the puppy go rough. And then I'd hold my finger to the nose and the puppy go rough. Well, the four minus two is two. My puppy could count. And the best trick of all, winter was coming. I would teach my puppy to sit on the front of my sled as we went zooming down the hill. But I went and found the Brenda boys. Disappointment number three. How much are those puppies? Five dollars, they said. Five dollars was so much money, I could hardly even imagine it in that tough time. I went and asked my mom, he said, Mom, could I please have five dollars to buy one of the Bender Boys puppies? And of course she said, no, I'm sorry, Frankie. I don't have five dollars to give you to buy one of the Bender Boys puppies. And I said, could I earn it? Could I bring in the wood from the wood pile? And she said, Frankie, it takes a lot of wood. Those pieces of wood are big and heavy. You're only six years old. I said, I can do it. I started carrying the wood a penny a day, but I wasn't making money fast enough. So I said, can I bring in the cobs and my wife uh, to start the fire? And my mom said, that cob basket's heavy. And I said, I'll make more than one trip, but I'll get it done. And I did, but I wasn't making money fast enough. And then I did something really brave. I said, can I gather the eggs? And my mom said, Frankie, those broody hens that are sitting on eggs. If you try to grab an egg out from underneath them, they're gonna peck your hand and make a bloody. And I said, I don't care. And sure enough, when I put my hand in, they would peck my hand so hard. They didn't want me taking their eggs and it would drew blood. So my aunt, big brother, David, he showed me how to pull the sleeve from my cup coat up over my hand so I could reach in there and get those eggs without getting all pecked. I worked and I worked and I worked and I worked. And I counted my pennies in the beginning of December. I got all the way to 40. And then I got all the way to 45. And then I got all the way to 50 and 51 and 52 and 53 and 54. I had 54 pennies. There was no way in the world I was ever going to get $5. I told myself, stop thinking about that puppy. But I couldn't. When I was supposed to be doing arithmetic problems at school, I drew pictures of puppies. When I was supposed to do spelling, I drew pictures of puppies. My teacher even wrote a note home to my mother. All Frankie can think about is a puppy. My mother had tears in her eyes and she said, Frankie, I know you want that puppy. I know you have a name picked out, Lassie, but I can't buy it for you. Christmas Eve day. 1939 was a cold, clear day. There was 
somewhere between a foot and a half and two feet of snow on the ground. We just finished milking. We were going into the house after doing all the chores, bedding down the animals, giving them an extra feed. It was Christmas Eve. Went off in the west, coming down the road. We heard this sound. It was the sound of sleigh bells. And down the road came a big team of horses pulling a bobsled. Mr. Bender was standing in the bobsled and he pulled into the driveway and he drove right into the yard and the big horses stood there chomping on the bit, stamping their feet in the snow and making the bells ring that were attached to their harness. And he tied the horses up and he jumped down and he said, boys, I need your help. And he pulled out a great big paper wrap package. He handed it to my brother, Paul. He said, Paul, it's heavy. Don't drop it in the snow. That's a Christmas ham. And then he pulled out a gunny sack and it went clink, clink, clink. And he handed it to my big brother, David, and said, don't drop it, David. There's canned jars in there. There's some fruit can for you. Mrs. Bender sent it for you. And my mom and my brothers and I all thanked him. We would have a wonderful Christmas dinner. And then he was getting back in this bobsled when he said, oops, I almost forgot. Frankie, I have something for you. And he reached in and he pulled out an old box that was tied shut with binder twine. And when he picked it up, a little noise came out of the box. And I bet you can guess what the little noise was. It was a little wolf. And my brother Ed got out his jackknife and he cut the twine and I opened up the box and my little puppy jumped out. It knocked me over in the snow. I fell down, was rolling over in the snow. The puppy's jumping all over, barking, yipping, so happy to see me. I couldn't believe it. I got up and I was holding my puppy. And Mr. Bender said, Frankie, the puppy's for you. And my mom said, Frankie, can you thank Mr. Bender? And I tried, but I couldn't. I couldn't say a word. So she thanked him for me with tears in her eyes. We went in then, took the puppy inside, gave it some warm milk, some bread, soaked in warm milk. We had our oyster stew dinner that we always had on Christmas Eve. It was time to go to bed. My mom said, Frankie, take the puppy out, tie him up in the barn by the horse manger. Make sure there's a good bed of straw or hay for him so he'll be warm. I said, Mom, it's Christmas Eve. It's cold out there. It's his first night. He'll be scared. Can't he stay in the house with us? And she relented. She got some old sacks. She made a little nest beside the wood stove. And she said, the puppy sleeps on that nest, not in bed with you. So I put the puppy to bed. I went up the cold stairs to my room. I climbed under my cold covers. And I was laying there shivering and shivering. And mom went to bed. And after a while, I heard something coming up the steps. I heard something sniffing outside my door. I heard a paw open the door that I left cracked open on purpose. And somebody came and jumped in my bed. I let him in under the covers. And then in the middle of the night, when my mom got up to stoke the fire, she looked for the puppy. It wasn't there. She knew where it was. After that, Lassie did have to sleep out in the barn, but I did teach Lassie to count. I did teach Lassie to fetch and to bring in the cows. And best of all, I taught her to sit in front of me when the sled, when we went zooming down the hill. My father gave that gift of that story to me and to my brothers and their families and to his grandchildren and now his great-grandchildren. If I could give you any gift, it would be the gift of kindness that I saw my father demonstrating to other people because that was the only way that he could repay Mr. Bender. And I so much appreciate you listening to my story and joining us tonight. Thank you. Wow, 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 wow. That was amazing. Oh my gosh. I just want to give gratitude for just how blessed I am that you've come into my life. And Bonita, how was that story for you and your friends? You want to, you want to talk about how much that meant to you? Oh, yeah, that was great. And you said zooming along. That's so timely. That's, that's not the kind of zooming he meant, Sammy. Oh, well, well, thank you, George. Thank you. Glad to have you in the family. <laughs> that's 
Matt Nutt's uh, family, all relative, it's all relative. So thank you very much, George. And our next talent sharer is Angelique Sunshine. Oh, I'm Sammy. If I marry you, will I be Sammy Sunshine? Oh, Sammy, that's, that's not polite to ask somebody when you just met them. And speaking of, Angelique is a third person I've met through a Facebook group. We are both in a weekly speakers group that meets on Zoom. She hails from California, and tonight she will share a story and a song. Take it away. All right. Well, thank you guys all for having me. And I'm so excited. There's so much talent here. Everybody has a, so many different, unique, and beautiful talents. And before I show you my super unique talent that I learned when I was in third grade, I'm going to first, I'm going to tell you a little story about gratitude and how we should be grateful for things that we have instead of things that we don't. And here we go. Okay, so there's a little boy named Davey, and he's eight years old. He is in third grade and he really went, he went to the store and he saw a coloring book and some colored pencils. And he begged his mom, mom, please, please, can I have the coloring book? That's all I want. All my friends at school have the coloring book and the colored pencils. And he went home and he didn't get the coloring book. So what he did instead was he decided he wanted to manifest a coloring book asking and receiving from the universe. So what happens is he's, he went to bed that night and he really asked for those coloring books. And when he came home from school the next day, the coloring book and the colored pencils were on his bed. He was so excited. Every day he woke up in the morning, he was coloring his book and coloring with his pencils until one day someone at school got color markers. He came home and he cried to his mom about the colored markers that he didn't have. So he took his colored pencils and he broke them all and he threw them all to the side. I'm not going to color anymore until I get colored markers. And then he remembered. He said, well, my mom said no to the colored pencils before and I manifested colored pencils. I wonder if I could manifest colored markers. Let me try. So he, he did all of his, he, he was, asking for the color markers and really trying, can I please, I'm, I thank you for my color markers in advance. And, and then the universe came back down and says, the universe tells him, why would I give you colored markers when you're not even using the colored pencils that I gave you? <laughs> so the moral of the story here is be grateful and use no matter how big or little you have in life, be grateful for what you have in life so that you can be abundantly accepting for other things that are bigger and greater for you in life as well. So that's the story of the color pencil. So everybody be grateful. And now I'm gonna share with you my quirky little talent, which is a total funny thing, learning when I was in third grade at Abiding Savior. And it is every single book in the Bible. It's one of those things you just can't forget. <laughs> every single book in the Bible in order. And it doesn't matter what our talents are. They are uniquely wonderful and beautiful. And so here it goes. Okay, I'm going to stand up for this one because I like to little do a little dance with it. All right, ready? Genesis, Exodus, Leviticus, Numbers, Deuteronomy, Joshua, Judges, Ruth, first and second, Samuel, first Kings, second Kings, first, second Chronicles, Ezra, Nehemiah, Esther, Joseph, Proverbs, Ecclesiastes, Song of Solomon, Isaiah, Jeremiah, Lamentations, Ezekiel, Daniel, Hosea, Joel, Abel, Obadiah, Jonah, Micah, Nahum, Habakkuk, Zephaniah, Haggai, Zechariah, and the last book, Malachi, wait, dun, 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 dun. <laughs> Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, Acts and letters to the Romans, first and second, Philippians, Galatians, and Ephesians, Philippians, Colossians, first and second, Thessalonians, first and second, Timothy, Titus, and Philemon, Hebrew, and the book of James, first and second, Peter, first and second, third, John, Jude, and Revelation, and that's my quirky talent, guys, <laughs> I am so grateful to be here and connect with you guys today. Thank you so much. It's a fast song, so I'm kind of out of breath. But <laughs> oh, <laughs> so grateful, guys. Have a beautiful day. 
Oh my gosh, you are too much fun. Mrs. Sunshine bringing out all the goodness, all the love. I can't even wait, you know, because this rainbow that's just like your daughter's hair and just amazing, you know, and, and these colors of all this creation and how it flows into one of our next amazing guests. Bonita, do you want to do you want to introduce our amazing uh, artist friend Eric Neiman? Yeah, and Nick wants to help me. Oh yeah, yeah, our next guest is Eric Eric Neiman, who is now in California. However, he used to be in the Midwest. In fact, I met him, I don't know how many years ago was it, Eric? 25? Maybe. I don't know. Yeah, he, 25. I practiced law, I had a solo law practice, and he worked in my office for a couple of weeks through a temp service. And I lost track of him, and then I meet him through Embracer Shift, I re-meet him. Yeah, that's right. Through Embracer Shift Facebook group. Eric has, he, he explores art and his paintings examine the relationship between what is measurable and the ethereal. That sounds like a contradiction. Well, combining his deep interest in the mysterious and the space forms and light qualities found in architecture, his work explores the tension that is created between these two seemingly contradictory worlds. Wow, that's something. And he's been painting professionally since January of 2002. I bet he's better than I am. Oh, yeah. His paintings are collected throughout 18 U.S. states, as well as Australia, Mexico, Tunisia. Where is that? You have to look at a map. Oh, and Hong Kong. And Eric has a degree in architecture. Hey, take it away, Mr. Eric Neiman. <laughs> Thank you so much, Benita, and, and your friends. Yeah, it was so great. I, I met, I worked with Benita for a couple of weeks back in like 1999, so in, in Kansas. So uh, I am super excited to introduce you to my artwork. I've been painting now for 19 years professionally, and I started. Um, through architecture school at the University of Kansas and also grad school in London, England. And um, I developed my own style over the years. And I have the same technique, but it's, um, but let me just introduce you. What we're going to do is uh, I have five paintings here behind me and we're going to go in and uh, I'm going to explore some of the really intricate details of these paintings. So it's, uh, I'm excited to share with you and why don't we just go deep here together? All right, well, look at what we have here. This is a orange painting. It has, it's two foot by four foot. And I'm just gonna explore some of the details here with you. And you can see, like, so how this is um, on the table, it's flat. This is how I paint. I paint flat on, on the table, and I'm using metal tools to paint with. So I'm, I'm using the trowel, like trowels and, and drywall knives to apply the paint. And it creates some really interesting textures, like you can see here. This orange one is one of my more recent ones. And here's a really interesting, I'm trying to get the shadow out of here. Um, here's an interesting detail. And this one, I, I think I'm naming this painting Aquifer because it's like these underground uh, water wells. All right, and we're gonna move on to another painting. This is, uh, this is also two foot by four foot. Uh, and then you can see the trowel work. So like Benita mentioned in my artist statement, what I'd like to explore are things 
that are measurable, you know, the different lines have a different width and you can actually measure certain things. And then there's other aspects like dreamlike aspects where you can't measure everything. You know, like, how do you measure what's going on in here? You could measure this, but not really that. So you can see the trowel works that I, I use. This is made with metal tools. And the way the ethereal and the measurable interact, it almost creates like this distance, like it's a, th a three dimensional thing, even though it's all flat. I'm just gonna go around and show you some uh, close up details of what's going on here. There's some gold, some uh, gold color paints in here. And then you got very light trowel work going on here. It's almost like these rays, these beams. And then we have some interesting things here. There's so much going on right there. I get excited when I get to, get to create this and share it with the world. Like my job is to create the beauty and then send that beauty out into the world to live its own life. And here is a purple painting. So again, you have things that are measurable and things that are not measurable. And this speaks to both my architecture background as well as my artistic background. And some of this almost reminds me of space, looking at like images from the Hubble Space Telescope. And this is, this is a really cool little detail right here. It's almost like a space window, you know, cutting through a nebula, looking out into deep space. And here's this interesting like beam, this ladder. I mean, some of these things, like I'm only just now discovering a lot of aspects of my paintings when I share with you. And then over here, we have a lighter color painting. This is one foot by, by uh, three feet. And this has a lot of texture in it, actually. Let's see if I can zoom in. And then this has, this is a lot of texture right here. It's this. And then we almost have like this landscape here. And maybe a reflection into the, into a lake. And then my, the fifth painting is also two foot wide by four foot tall. And this has so many interesting things going on. Here's another kind of space window. It's almost like those lagoons that you see in the Caribbean or Mexico, where it's like deep and and here's this amazing little line. I'm gonna take you on a journey of this amazing line. It splits into two. And then there's this other window. It's like almost like a curtain that opens up, revealing something on the other side. And here again are things that are measurable next to things that you can't really measure. And then here's some more, what 
reminds me of space, you know, nebula gases out in the universe and galaxy that the Hubble Space Telescope takes photos of. I love the mysterious worlds that they create. There we go. Let me go in really close here. Yeah, so that is a little bit about my artwork. Let me switch over here. So I am a uh, Again, I'm Eric Neiman, and I am incredibly grateful for the opportunity to share my art with all of you, for the technology that we have to be able to do this. And I'm grateful for Zach for creating this group and Bonita for being our MC today. And I am just, uh, yeah, thrilled to be part of this, uh, this uh, bonanza extravaganza experience. So thank you for watching. Eric, I am so grateful for you, brother. You've been just a constant support, constant friend, constant inspiration in my life, man. I just want to say thank you so much. And uh, man, your art is mind blowing, bro. I wish we could have dialogue like we did in our one on one video. But it sounds like from doctor is this is a, a new platform that if I did that, that uh, so thank you for running with that, man. That was beautiful. And um, oh, my goodness, I'm so excited to uh, to introduce our, our next guest as an incredible friend of mine that I think has been the longest running friendship I've had in my life. And, uh, and Doc, I think you might want to switch uh, so, that, so that the uh, profile is on, uh, is on the speaker. But anyways, um, and so Crystal Evans, one of my longest running friends of my whole life. I think I've known you for 20 years. And, uh, and Crystal, do you want to give a little intro to yourself? I, I know you're doing so much as a mom, as an entrepreneur, as starting schools in Africa, as being a compassionate, powerful, single mother that's bringing transformation into the world. Oh, my gosh, Crystal, what do you got for us? Oh, thank you so much. Well, I know you had talked about doing the poem for a new year, but Crystal, one second. I apologize. It's a Doc Yoder. So I am not seeing your name on my participants list. So I don't know who to highlight. Oh, I'm Crystal Evans. Crystal, what name oh, do you have on your Zoom account right now? I, I know. I'm on somebody else's Zoom account accidentally. It's Bob Dudley. <laughs> so, Bob Dudley. Bob Dudley. It's Bob Dudley. Bob Dudley. If he's looking for the count, it's Bob Dudley, but I'm Crystal Evans. <laughs> well, Crystal's amazing. She's in Mexico. She's uh, been all over the world. She's just an incredible friend, just dropping in. And uh, so you're so amazing. And uh, and I know the internet might be a little bit choppy, but do you want to share something and, and, and introduce your amazing family to us as well? Sure. Okay, yeah, this is Bayera. Yay! Hi. He fell asleep. River fell asleep while Eric was sharing his paintings. It's like a dream state. I love it. Yeah. So that was perfect. I didn't have, he just nicely fell asleep. Um, and I'm going to go ahead and share a story that I wrote earlier this year. Um, that And I wrote it to be an encouragement, mostly to children, but Really, it's been super encouraging to adults that I've shared it with as well. So I'm going to share my screen. Hopefully, it will show up fine. So, um, here we go. Here, hypothetically, let's hope it's here. Okay. So I had a beautiful artist um, from somewhere on the other side of the world make this beautiful art for me. That opens up the story. This is a parable story. So I think as I begin to read it, you'll understand what the parable is about. Once upon a time, a great darkness swept across the land abruptly. Some said it came without any notice. Others said it was a foretold about in ancient books. But this is not a story about the darkness. 
This is a story about the light, the great light named love that existed even before time or land that lived and breathed before man. The great light had a superpower, which, uh, oh, sorry, when I'm scrolling, I get lost. Uh, the great light had a superpower, which was creating and multiplying. It could take a little bit of good and a little bit of love and make it turn into a lot of good and a lot of love. It could take a little bit of light and turn it into unstoppable brightness and irresistible goodness. I'll just pause in the artwork for a second there for you to take in the art. And when I decided to do this artwork, it was kind of before all the racial tension broke out in the US. Um, and then like afterwards, I was like, wow, I think that's why part of the reason of the artwork I did, because a lot is about, um, you know, working together and that we are This superpower was like a seed planted in good, rich soil. If you plant a seed in good, rich soil, it will grow a, into a strong, tall, sturdy tree. The tree in turn will grow many pieces of delicious, vitamin-packed, life-giving fruit. And each piece of delicious, vitamin-packed, life-giving fruit will have many seeds hidden inside of it that will grow many more st strong, tall, sturdy trees, which will grow many more pieces of delicious, vitamin-packed, life-giving fruit full of many more hidden seeds. In this way, the mystery of the superpower is that inside one seed lives a whole entire orchard. And that is the way of the great light. The great light had many seeds of love and wanted to see love spread across the land. So the great light looked for good, rich soil. Then he saw the hearts of faith-filled men and women and joyful boys and girls all over the world. And he recognized the soil that was good. So the great light went on a journey, going into busy, bustling big cities, into small, itsy, bitsy, tiny villages, into the ordinary, medium-sized towns, and way out into the country where homes and people were scattered miles apart. Then the great light would gently put seeds of love into people's hearts. As the great light sang this song, multiply, do not hold on to love for yourselves, plant it in the hearts of those you hold dear, plant it in the hearts of those far and near, Give love away for the mystery of love is only then will it stay. Give love because it's the only way to keep love alive. It's the only way for love to grow and thrive. Multiply, multiply. Oh, pause on this artwork here. So the people happy to have received love began to think about how they could give it away when they went to work, when they went to pray, when they went to school, when they went out to play, they gave love to their neighbors and to those they would meet out in the streets. If they found somebody who was in need, they would remember the parable of the seed and they would give food to the hungry so they could live close to the naked and hope to those who thought they could not make it. They gave comfort to those that were sad. They gave peace and kindness to those who were mad. They would celebrate with those who are glad. As they continued to give love to strangers and their family alike, something very special happened. Not only did love spread around the globe from neighborhood to neighborhood, from town to town, from city to city, from nation to nation, but also with each act of kindness made, darkness would begin to fade, and a tall lantern of light arose upon the land, letting out of light so beautiful and grand, a light that shone ever so light, shone all day and shone all night.
It is the story I read to you before, Mayor. Yeah, there's the dark guy. Yes. What is dog? Yes. Before long, there were there were lights in every town, and you would find smiles on faces instead of the once forlorn frowns. The atmosphere of hope grew great as love became the most recognizable trait. Since the land was so full of light, most were happy, but one was not. His name was Darkness, and Darkness had a companion called Fear. Fear decided to declare a battle against love. Fear would make people feel like there was not enough and turn people's hearts from love towards greed. Fear would tell the people to only think about themselves and forget about giving kindness to those in need. Other times fear would go around robbing its victims of peace and hope, leaving the people of the land feeling disappointed and questioning how they could. When this happened, a few of the lanterns of light that once shone oh ever so bright grew dim and dimmer and became but a flicker as the land grew dark and darker. So throughout time, the great light would send many love messengers to the land to help them remember to love. And that was light. All that was light to make sure they loved each other day and night. One particular messenger came with a message about the kingdom of light. He reminded people that the kingdom was at hand, that it was in their hands. He reminded the people that they were light and love ambassadors who had but one mission to accomplish. That was to look and see that the great light was doing in the heavens and then do those very same things on earth. He performed many miracles of love and healing for all to see so they might once again believe that they could be free. The messenger of love told the people many stories that reminded them not to be afraid, not to worry encouraged them to lay down their burdens that they were never meant to carry. The messenger of love saw that the people needed faith and courage. So the messenger of love had compassion on the people and the messenger of love came with the gifts of faith and courage. He told them to open up their hands, to open up their hearts. He commanded them to take courage, to store it in their deepest parts, that they were, that they may never fear again because they would have peace within the people took the seeds of faith and courage as the messenger of love told them they would do greater things than he had. So the people once again became hopeful and glad. Then he sang them this song, multiply, do not hold on to faith and courage for yourselves. Plant it in the hearts of those you hold dear. Plant it in the hearts of those who are far and near. Give it away for the mystery of faith and courage is only then do they stay. Become encouragers because it's the only way to keep faith and courage alive. It's the only way for faith and courage to grow and thrive. Multiply, multiply. Go make faith-filled believers that they would believe in the power of love and that light would want to spread throughout the land. Let love become as countless as the pieces of sand. So faith and courage and sparked great acts of love and lit lights throughout busy, bustling big cities in itsy bitsy tiny villages in ordinary medium sized towns and way out in the country where homes and people were scattered miles apart as seeds were planted in each heart. This caused darkness to grow angry and fume with fury. So throughout history, darkness would do all he could to cause division and hate. He'd cause families to bicker and separate. He would bring wars and famine. He led people away from wise instructions. He made plots and plans of all the ways he could harm man. Then one day it happened that a cloud of darkness swept across the land. Was it a plague? Was it a storm of fear? Was it a planned evil? The people debated why it came where it came from, what it meant. The people were forced into their homes. Some people shivered in fear and their lights grew dim and dimmer. Darkness smiled and thought it was the winner.
But many came out and they chose courage and love all the same. They chose to feed the hungry. Nurses went to the hospitals, risked their lives and cared for the stick sick. Storytellers began once again to tell their ancient stories of the past woven together with truths that if listened to would change, would bring a change that would last. Artists began to make art again. Musicians found new songs to be sung. The hearts of the old turned to the young. Creative miracles were released. Dreams were once again chased. They humbled themselves and asked the great light to heal and restore their land. They learned to forgive each other and even to reach out and care for their enemies. They were moved with compassion and kindness once again became the sought after fashion. Even in the midst of darkness, they stopped complaining and began to think about all they were grateful for. They learned to count their blessings and they sang songs about how they were grateful. They seem divided, but this life of prayer, their actions of devotion and care kept them united as courage and love multiplied around the world. Once faint lights grew bright and brighter until there was no place one could go without seeing light shining ever so bright. They had won. Darkness was forced to retreat. Fear was beat. People left their homes and came back out into the streets and they hugged and they laughed and they went outside and they danced. They were grateful for another chance to multiply all that was good and to protect the land as they held the keys to the kingdom of light and love in their hands. And that's the story, people. And that's what we are here doing. The painters are painting, the magicians are doing their magic, the singers are singing their songs, the puppets are showing us things. The ukulele man, is that what you're on, is singing. Uh, the storyteller is telling his story and we are bringing love and kindness into this world, making it a lighter, brighter, more beautiful place. So thank you for all for being a part of lighting up this world and we win. The darkness doesn't win, COVID doesn't win, Anything related with that doesn't win. Separation doesn't win. Love wins. Crystal, I love you so much. You are so amazing. You you just inspired me to bust out a little bit of song right here. Just to, uh, just to oh my gosh. You're, did you make that artwork, by the way? Because that artwork, artwork was incredible. I, I had the concept of the artwork of how I wanted it to be outlaid, but then I, I picked an artist and worked with awesome. him to, to do it because well, I'm this, not that well, This song is for you, Crystal, you and your beautiful children. And uh, uh, all you need is love, love. All you really need is love. Ooh. Everybody sing along and meet yourself and let's try it for a song. Where there's nothing you can know that is enough. with a little bit of a jazzy Elvis uh, 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 joy music if you want it. But in the meantime, Benita, did you want to introduce us to Clairvoyant? Oh. Absolutely. Oh. Claire is one of my old, old friends. Uh, not that old. Well, I mean, I've known you a long time. Like Zach has known Crystal a long time. Oh, yeah, yeah. And as he said, your name is Claire Voyant. That's right. Does that mean that you are Claire Voyant? Yes, that's right. I mean, I mean, does that mean that you have ESP? Oh, yes, just like you, just like me. Yes, extra strong perspiration. <laughs> Claire, don't sweat it, honey. Listen. 
you should be nice to me. I mean, I do. Uh, I, I, I'm a licensed attorney. I'm a, I'm a lawyer. You're a liar. I'm not a liar. I'm a lawyer. Oh, well, what's the difference? I'm a member of the bar. Well, I'm a member of the Flamingo Club. I mean, when you're a member of the bar, it means you can practice law. Well, you better keep practicing and learn how to do it. <laughs> Actually, these days I'm spending more time in edutainment. What's that? That's where you combine entertainment and education. And tonight we've talked about gratitude. I want to share a daily gratitude practice I have. Yeah, what is it? Every day, I email three things I'm grateful to to a group of friends. And if I forget, I see an email from one of them that reminds me because we all email the group. Three things in this time? Oh, yes. You're kidding? No, no. It's especially important to focus on what you're thankful for now during these times of uncertainty and with people being worried you know, what you focus on can expand. My waste? Your waste. The idea is to focus on positive things, things that make you feel good. Like ice cream? Uh, you know, the gratitude practice that I engage in, you share these three things by email every day and three things that happened in the last 24 hours. Yeah. Or that you've noticed or been aware of in the last 24 hours. Yeah. And... You can't repeat. No repeats. No, three different things every day. How in the world can you do that in this whatchamacallit thing we're doing? The, the pandemic? Uh, there's so many things around. Like what? Why don't you just, let's take turns. One good turn deserves another. Yeah. For example, I'm grateful for this, this necklace. It's hand glass beads made by someone I know who grew up in Kansas. Okay, so what's something you're grateful for? I'm a bad lady. I got raggedy clothes. I ain't got nothing. Oh, there's got to be something. Just, just take a moment. Well, I have a scarf that can keep me warm. Yeah. And I'm grateful that I met Zach and all the people here in this, this uh, talent sharing tonight, this extravaganza, and that we can come together and connect in the virtual world. Okay, it's your turn. Now, what's the second thing you're grateful for? Uh, uh, oh, I got an apple. I'm grateful for my apple. Hey, you're getting the hang of it. Yeah, I guess so. And what else am I grateful? I'm grateful to have you here tonight as my friend sharing with me. Oh, wow. Let's see. Let's see. It's my turn. Yeah. What's the third thing? Uh, I can't come up with anything. You, you surely there, there's something else. Oh, oh. I just thought of something. I got shoes. You can't see them very much on this Zoom thing. But there they are. Yeah. You know, that means I got soul. Soul. Yeah. That's S-O-L-E. I mean the other kind. I got that too. Soul. S-O-U-L. And so do all of you. Sister, soul sister, give a little bit of soul sister, soul sister. Oh. Wow, that's so good. That's so good. Hey, who's our next guest, Zach? Well, I think.
Big Soren's going to be next, and he's going to be doing something, but uh, he might have uh, stepped away to, to, to do a little bite of food. So let's just have fun and jam until he shows up. Oh, there he is. All right. Well, Soren's here. And, uh, but hey, you know what? It's actually a special guest. His name's Grandpa Sig. But, uh, but Bonita, um, do you want to introduce Grandpa Sig? But, but continue. I was just feeling the inspiration to sing along with your fun. Oh, yeah, that was nice. Hey, 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 Grandpa, did you say Grandpa? Yes, Grandpa's sick. Oh, I'm excited. I'm looking forward to this. Yeah, yeah, he was in for a little bit earlier. I missed him. Why are you looking forward to him so much? Cause... Hello there. Hey, I'm looking for an eligible bachelor. Well, I yeah, I guess. I, I'm called quite a bachelor. You know, when I was, uh, when I was a young whippersnapper, I had all this fishnet all over me, and I won a competition in Halloween. And that's fishy! Okay, that's enough. Well, they called me a great catch, because I had that, uh, all that fishing gear on me, you know? Oh, that's funny, that's funny, but you know what? what? I got one on you. What's that? I'm off my rocker. Yes, well, I'm on my rocker. I see that. Yes. Well, Are that, you that's... a rock star? Well, you know, I don't know if I'm a rock star, but I'm sure great at making a fire. Here, let me just uh, shimmy over here. You can see the fire there. And oh. I just wanted to tell you a little story, if I may. Can I tell you a story? Yeah, I'm going to sit down and listen. Just don't put me in the fire, okay? Well, I won't even put you on the spot, okay? Okay, good. I Okay, sounds good. Well, I wanted to tell you a little story when I was a young whippersnapper. The year was 1929, in fact. And that year, it was a year of great courage for all the people here in my hometown of Victoria, British Columbia. And when I was walking through the park with my mother, we came across a lady. And this lady was named Emily Carr. I don't know if you've ever heard of Emily Carr. But she said to us, why don't you just take any painting you want? In fact, why don't you take one for yourself and one for your little sonny boy? She said to my mother. And my mother said, oh no, thank you very much. We'll be on our way now. And uh, you know, I've never forgiven my mother for this because I don't know if you know, but one of her paintings just sold for $3.5 million. So I would have been a much, uh, had a much different lifestyle. I would have been able to afford private health care for my darn herniated disc operation. And I would have had a much different lifestyle indeed. So I want you to know two very important things. You must live with every moment of every day with your utmost potential and you will live a very happy and prosperous life. And the other thing is, if anyone offers you anything for free, you better doggone take it. So that's my story for today. But I was just wondering if anyone would like to put any questions in the chat, and I will do my, my best to answer the questions to the worst of my ability. Okay, anybody want a question here? Just put it and maybe if chat. we just uh, unmute ourselves too, you know. Oh because, yes, uh, unmute and just ask me a yeah, question. Bonita, yes, uh, it, you and Clairvoyant and all your friends. Uh, I mean, I bet I bet all your friends have tons of great questions. Yeah. How about you, Doc and Eric? You guys got any great questions? Doc, you got any questions? So, I got so one. Oh yes, let's hear it. I want a question. I'm. I'm terrible at answering them, but I'll do my best. You see my super, my super woman Kate? Oh, yes, indeed, yes. I remember way back when, when Superman came out of the closet. Oh, I thought it was a phone booth. Oh, was it a phone booth? Oh, I thought it was a closet. My goodness, my, my uh, eyes weren't very good back then. You see, my glasses are almost falling off. I'm kind of making a spectacle. My, do you? You are making a spectacle. And you know what? I just started this colon cleanse 
So I'm making quite a stink around here. You're making a spectacle and I'm making a stink. Now, um, excuse me, uh, young lady, but uh, I, I'm having troubles hearing you. I think you're on the mute function. There we go. Can I hear you now? Let's see. The question is, can she hear you? Because she has hearing aids. Oh, goodness, yes. Well, it's good to have a hearing aid. Yeah, yeah. On your colon cleanse, is everything coming out all right? Well, I would say it's coming out quite excrementially. <laughs> yes. Everything's flowing like a river without a cause. <laughs> I hope it's all okay in the end. Oh, yes, I think it'll all fill up nicely. <laughs> Okay, well, you're, you're making me think I gotta go. When you gotta go, you gotta go. See you another time. Okay, does anybody else have a question? Doc, do you have a question for, because you can just trust the wisdom of an old, old man? Doc, have you got a question? So I am wondering, Grandpa, just how old you have to be to actually be old. Well, you see, that's a very great, good question. Now, his question was, how old do you have to be to be uh, considered old? Is that, is that, did I make it out right there? Well, I feel that I'm still a young whippersnapper, even at the ripe old age of, of 92. I do feel like a 47-year-old man sometimes, you know? So uh, when, when I feel like this, I've got a lot of vigor, and I wake up every morning with uh, a few intentions, actually. When I wake up in the morning, I'm just grateful to be alive. So I do say, I'm alive, I'm awake, and I feel great. I say that five times. I'm alive, I'm awake, I feel great. I'm alive, I'm awake, and I feel great. I'm alive, I'm awake, and I feel great. I know what you're thinking. You yes. have Alzheimer's! Oh, you say, do I have Alzheimer's? Because you repeat yourself. Oh, yes, that's a good, that's a good question. Well, I don't, uh, I used to play hockey for the old timers. Is that what you're saying? Ah, uh, see, he needs a hearing aid too. He's I might need a hearing aid as well. I'm pretty sure you said, do you, did you play for the old timers? <laughs> no? Yeah, you're one of those men who won't get their hearing tested. Well, what? I think everyone should get tested. I've gotten tested for about 65,000 things over the years. <laughs> you're old! You're old! Well, thank you. I like being old. You know what's even better than being old? Do you know? Being wise! Being wise! Being, well, actually, what's even better than being old is being young. <laughs> oh. Hey, Gran Grandpa, speaking of being young. Yes, what, Eric. What, how are the teenagers when you grow up, when you grew up, how are they different than the teenagers today? Do you have any interesting observations? Well, the interesting thing was I met this uh, man from Texas and uh, this man from Texas uh, used to say to me, he said, one thing you gotta do when you have daughters is you've gotta invest in a, a double barreled shotgun. And so, uh, what I did when, uh, when this, these young men were courting my daughters, I would sit there with a double-barreled shotgun and one hand on the shotgun, the other hand was uh, very gently polishing the, the, uh, the patina of my shotgun. And uh, when that young whippersnapper would come by, I would sit there on the couch, one hand on the shotgun, the other hand I would reach out my hand. And you might think I would give him a stare down, but no, I gave him a nice grandpa-like smile and I looked him right in the eyes and I gave him a big smile and he did nothing to my daughter. He thought I was darn crazy. <laughs> so uh, that's a little bit of advice for you. If you've got a young whippersnapper, don't you, Eric? No, uh, young... no, no, I have nieces and nephews, though. So, oh, okay. I'm well, to you get, got some... get some good advice for them. So. You got some whippersnappers there, eh? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> some, uh, some halibuts as well as whippersnappers, <laughs> uh, just for the halibut, right? They always say, 
Now, uh, anybody else have a question? Yeah, yeah. What's your best advice and your worst advice for a young whippersnapper? Well, I would say the question was, what's your best advice and what's your worst advice for a young whippersnapper? Well, my best advice is to go out in nature as much as you can. Take your eyes off that, uh, that uh, uh, device, you know, the iPhone, iPad, and what Zach is doing right now. He's, in fact, looking at an iPad, and uh, he's not paying attention to me. So uh, <laughs> I want your full attention there, Zachariah. I just want to make sure everybody can see you, brother. But I okay. love you, Grandpa. Keep it going, man. Keep That's it going. Okay. So, so my best advice is to look up. Too many times you're looking at the, uh, the device and you're not really uh, interacting in a proper way. In fact, I was uh, walking down the beach that I go to, which is called Willows Beach, quite close by. And I was sitting there with my great-grandson, who was 16 years old at the time. And we were looking at the beautiful site of Mount Baker. And when we looked out there, I said, whoa. Isn't this a wonderful view? Have you ever seen it so clearly? I don't think I've ever made out such a clear view of Mount Baker. And you know what he said? Anybody know? No? Um, he said, he said, where's my friggin' iPad? <laughs> so, let's clearly. Oh. Yeah, so my best advice is to get off that phone and connect with nature and look at Mount Baker in a different way. That's my best advice. Look at Mount Baker as a, in gratitude, because we're talking about gratitude here. My worst advice is probably uh, to, uh, to put um, a stick inside a spoke of a wheel of a bicycle. That's probably the worst advice I could ever give a young whippersnapper. Because that causes everyone to fly over the, uh, the handlebars. And a lot of teenagers these days are not even wearing helmets for their melons. You notice, they, I saw one teenager the other day. Now I'm going to get really, really raunchy on you. Well, not raunchy, but I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to just uh, put it up a notch. I was, um, I was walking down the street and I saw this young whippersnapper around 15. And he was riding a bicycle with no hands, with uh, one hand on his cell phone, actually both hands on his cell phone. He was texting with one and holding the cell phone with the other. He's very he talented. And he wasn't very wearing a helmet either. I know, I was saying, whoa, that boy is talented, but also he's got a death sentence. So um, you can be talented, but you can also have a death sentence at the same time, right? You don't want to combine the talent and death at the same time, right? That's uh, that's that probably not be entertainment. That would not be very entertaining. No, it no. no, that's right. That's right. So, anyways, so that's uh, that's my answer there. Does anybody else have any questions before I sign off? Tell them about the seven o'clock. I do have. Uh, by the way. I am going live at 7 o'clock p.m. tonight for further questioning. And uh, I also want to do a little uh, Jeopardy as well. So you can give me the answers and I'll give you the questions. So, uh, isn't that backwards? Isn't that how what works? Backwards, backwards, huh? That's kind of backwards, yeah. Well, it could be backwards day today. See, I like backwards, backwards. day. Do you like backwards day? Oh, there, there, you're backwards on me. Nice. Well, anyways, I, I, I do want to go inside out and outside in here. And I appreciate your time and I'm very grateful for you joining me today. And I do want to say that uh, you must live with every moment of every day with your utmost potential and you will live a very happy and prosperous life. Now I'll sign control back to uh, Bonita or Zach, and uh, they will uh, they will do a, a, a closing demonstration. Thank I'll you. Very really you go before Layla you go, Grandpa Zig, uh, okay. before you go there, Bye, I'd really like I'd like to ask you a question there. And uh, 
Because I, I hear that you're quite the musician, and uh, I was wondering if you might want to close us out with just a little song. But before we do that, I was wondering if uh, Crystal and your kids uh, want to give you a chance to ask Grandpa Sig a question, too. Do you guys want to ask Grandpa Sig a question? Question? Do you want to ask Mayor? Can you think of a question? No, I think we're too shy to ask a question, but thank you. How about you, Crystal? What's your question? Oh, Oh, Crystal has uh, one for me, does she? Okay. Why don't you shoot? Not with my, my shotgun. My, my, don't my shoot! Shotgun. How many horses you own? Not I'm sorry, I didn't hear that. Could you please repeat that? They wanted to know how many horses you, you own. own. How many horses? Yes. Oh, how many horses? Well, I, I do want to say that... Uh, that sometimes you need to uh, have many horses, especially at a time during COVID when you cannot hug all these uh, people that you meet. So um, I feel that you need to hold your horses as much as possible. So yeah, I hope that answers your question. I have 67 horses and I don't know why I chose the, the number 67. Maybe it's a uh, it's a, it's just sounds nice, doesn't it? 67. Now I have them out in the pasture in the back, uh, back time there. And I was just splitting some wood earlier today. And in fact, one of my horses was sniffing my buttocks. I, at first I didn't mind, but then it gave me a little bit of a buck. And I was, uh, I, I flew about five feet. And then I turned around and the horse, the poor thing, was uh, just gave me a, a long face. So I want you to know that you sometimes need to watch out with the long faces of your horses. Then you know they're dissatisfied. And I, I hope that answers your question there, Crystal. Yes, thank you very much. You're very welcome. I'm sniffing you because you are on a colon cleanse. Well, yes, I'm on a colon cleanse. That's probably why it was sniffing my buttocks. That's a really good point. Yes, my, my colon has been working very, in a, you know, excremental manner. So. Well, I'm glad that you got a chance here to share with us about your colon and your, and your excrement and all your, uh, you know, and if you wanted to close this out with a little tune, I would, I would love it, you know, but uh, man, this has been so much fun. Thank you everyone for showing up and embrace your shift. Do you have a tune you want to close us out there with uh, Mr. Soren? Yes, you know what? I do have, um, I, I do have a First Native, uh, First Nations flute here. So I'd love to play a song on my double barrel flute, if I may. Please, please. Okay, just one moment. I'm having my faithful assistant, or assistant, which is also called my better half, um, handed to me. She's a lot younger because look at me, I'm pretty handsome, aren't I? Okay, so I'll be playing a little song for you. So here we go. <laughs> I hope that resonated with you. Oh, oh, oh. Deep, that deep, song deep. is in the key of G sharp. And when I play it, I get awfully sleepy. So I think I better hit the hay here. And I might need to retire to my drawing room where I can read a book about the ethics of war and nuclear deterrence. Okay, well, on that note, 
let me say goodbye to you all. And uh, I hope you enjoyed the talent show here tonight. There was so much talent. Now, I, I don't want to go through everyone's talent to review it, but all of you know that this was one of the best talent shows that some people, a lot of people, have never seen. <laughs> so have a lovely night. And have a I beautiful night. Thank you. Thank you. It's been wonderful. And, and uh, look forward to seeing more of you and embrace your shift and everybody else. And uh, but thank you so much. We'll, we'll be now. seeing lots of you and as often as we can. So thank you. Thank you. And uh, is there anybody else here that would like to uh, share anything, uh, closing remarks or gratitude or appreciation for this time that we've shared together and, and also just about the excitement of, of what we can create in the future of having many more of these that embrace your shift mastermind. Sierra would like to do something. Go ahead. Wonderful. Go ahead and what give her the spotlight there, Mr. Doc. What do, what do you want to do? You want to sing a song? Okay, go ahead. You can sing. The rainbow shines bright every day. Your bird on your birthday, Christmas, New Year's Eve, Christmas Eve, stressful days, the rainbow shines bright. Oh, thank you. That was a beautiful song. Thanks, Bonita. What What did you and your friends think about that, Miss Bonita? That was great. You're kind of shy. I want to see your face. Oh, it's so cute, your face. Eric, this has been such an amazing time with you, brother. I appreciate your artwork, your constant support. I'm just so thankful for you. Would you like to share any uh, closing remarks? Yeah, I'll, I will share with you my favorite haiku poem. It's Please. originally from Japan, from the... Uh, 18th century. This is the English translation. Full moon and on the mat, the shadow of a pine tree. That's it. That's deep, bro. You're the deepest deep man. Deep calls <laughs> your shadow deep, side. I'm so thankful that you came into my life. I, I feel like those deep areas of just needing real connection, real friendship, real Thank family. You. You've really answered that, and brother. One word about the deep. Uh, in architecture school in London, my Iranian professor, he said, he said, it's not about depth. It's about the deep. Wow. It's not about depth. It's about the deep. Wow. And and I took that, what his sharing, and that went right into my painting. So, yeah. Thank and it shows, man, it shows so much. I can't wait to do another one-on-one -on -one where we uh, get a just dialogue because there's something so crazy and cool that happens when we begin to uh, take the camera and, and look and really just see the value, you know, whether it's in the paintings, in the songs, in the stories. Doc, you've been such an amazing uh, part of this journey, brother. Uh, we would have never been able to do it without you behind the scenes. Do you want to give us any closing remarks before we sign off? Just to be kind. I like the story, the book, a lot of kindness can overcome a lot. So be kind to each other. Well, you've been kind to share us your story, man. I, I love your puppies and the whole adventure. You're one of the best storytellers I've ever heard with your bells, your chimes, your, your all of it, man. I'm, I'm overwhelmed with gratitude for everyone here. And I just want to say thank you to everyone that's been showing up live. And we're going to be having more of these, you know, one-on-ones and groups and, and extravaganzas. So anybody that's uh, seeing this live or, or even afterwards, drop a comment. If you have a uh, talent that you'd like to showcase the world, that's why I created this mastermind tribe I call Embrace Your Shift. It's just a way for us to all uh, to support each other, to step out of our shift, to recognize that shifts the stuff that makes love grow and that when we uh, when we keep showing up even in the midst of our shift and and even when it might even feel a little bit shifty that we uh, that we truly let our love grow and shine 
So I just want to say thank you so much for, for, for Bonita Joy and your puppet friends, for Doc and your mastermind behind the scenes, for, for Soren with your laughter yoga and grandpa and, and improv and tunes. And, um, and so this has just been a wonderful journey. So if anybody wants to, uh, to say anything else, otherwise, Doc, whenever you feel uh, you know, ready, you can go ahead and uh, wrap it up unless somebody has a uh, closing song or anything else. So I'll just give us a little bit of a and go ahead and sign out and I'll just drift it out with the tunes while you hit that button that says end live. All right. Cool, man. Well, this was great. Thank you, everybody. <laughs>